Would everyone just close your eyes, stretch out your hands, and let's trust God. Father, we thank you for every person here. We thank you for shift. We thank you for this youth ministry. Thank you for every grade 9, 10, 11, 12 plus. We thank you for the work that you're doing in our hearts, in our lives. Guide our steps, Lord. I pray this message impacts us. I pray that it makes a difference in us, that we can take it home. In Jesus' name, everyone say amen so just to introduce myself for those who are new to church by the way if you're new why don't you raise your hand first time here fantastic let's give them a hand oh there's loads great to have you with us really fantastic so just want to encourage you uh my name is justin if you haven't figured that out already as i said i've been involved in youth ministry the last seven years it's been a great privilege and honor um i'm only 19 years old now so it's been a, a real it's no, i'm a little bit older than that a few years but um, so I, I, just just a little bit of a background. Uh, growing up, I, I attended church. I would say that I was a Christian, but I would never really live that way. And that's important to recognize because most people, when they talk about their belief, that's how it starts. I, I was brought up in a Christian family. We went to church, but we didn't really live that way. And that's important to recognize because if we live that way, then we're not really living the way that we intend to. So if you follow Jesus, it's a lifestyle. It's not just a Friday thing or a Sunday thing. So that's kind of how I was brought up. I worked for ESCOM for four years and no, the load shedding was not my, it was, it was not, I was, I was long gone before then. And then for four years, I was, uh, I worked as a mechanical engineer in uh, industry called metrology, or I was a metrologist. In other words, I measured things. So four years in ESCOM, four years measuring things basically ar around the country. And, and then uh, there was call of God on every one of our lives, but that was a moment for me to step into full-time ministry. I've always had a passion for young people because I'm young, but also because um, I know that this is a generation that can change things. Throughout history, we see every revolution is started by young people. Every, every, every generation steps up, rises against something or for something, and they make a difference. And I know that's where the difference is. So that's why we say things like, you are not leaders of tomorrow, you're leaders of today. You're leaders of right now. You, can, you don't have to wait till you leave school to make a difference in our country. You can already be the difference in our country. You can be the difference in your school, the difference in your homes, the difference in your community. And we've got four values at, at Bridge Church and at, at Shift, and that the first one is to love God. It's the foundation of everything. I wanna encourage you, if you wanna have a relationship with God, the best way to start is to love Him. It, it doesn't mean you need to like him or like what he does. It just means love him. Get to a point where you can commit your life to him. There'll be a moment in every service where we give everyone an opportunity to choose to follow Jesus if they want to. That's the foundation. That's the start. Everything we do starts with that, loving God. I love the fact that praise and worship, we're so passionate about it. But I also love the fact that during worship, we can engage and connect with him. Loving God isn't just about hype. That's important. It's not just about hype. Now, younger people can, can very much fall into that trap. Oh, if we're jumping around, Jesus, then I must love Jesus. Not necessarily. Maybe you're just going along with the hype. The person next to you is jumping, so it's a bit awkward if you don't. So you just jump anyway with them. Maybe you've been caught in that trap. <laughs> I don't want to jump, but everyone's jumping. Now I need to jump. It's not just about hype. It's about engaging. It's about connecting. It's more than that. We're enthusiastic about Jesus, absolutely. But there's also a connection, a health. The second thing is we love people. Oh, we, 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 one of the things we stand on is that we connect with people, we engage with people, we real, we authentic. I never want this to be a fake place. Ever walk in a place or walk in an area where you feel like everyone knows each other, but you're the outcast. This should never be that. This should be a place where when anyone walks in, you're family. So, for example, those of you who joined for the first time, I hope that when you walked in the doors, you didn't feel like an outcast. I hope that you felt welcomed and that you've always been here. That during worship and every element, I hope that that was your experience because that's definitely the intention. We're about loving people. We're about discovering purpose. That's the third value. Discovering purpose is that we're not just floating through life, but we're actually walking with intention. We're going somewhere with intention. There's purpose to your life. How do you know what your purpose is? Well, figure out what you're passionate about. About, figure out what you're gifted at, combine them, and you step into your purpose. Different message, different day, different story. But discover your purpose. Figure out what's your fit. What's your fit in church life? What's your fit in school, for example? You know, for some of you, you're really good at sports, but you suck at singing. 
For some of you, you're really good at singing, but you suck at sports. For some, some of you, you're just good at debating and you suck at everything else. But you know what? There's a gift. God's given you a gift. If you're sitting in this room and maybe even if you're watching online and you don't believe that you have a gift, then you're lying to yourself. I promise you, I promise you now, it's all through our scripture. God's given you gift. He's given you purpose. We just need to learn how to step into that. It's figuring it out, right? And lastly, we want to empower change. And this is, this is the culmination of those three things, that when we love God, love people, discover purpose, we can then empower change. This is about being change agents in our schools. Just because it's always been done that way, it doesn't make it right. Just because everyone else is doing, doesn't make it right. Just because that's, oh, but we've always done it this way. It doesn't mean that's the best thing. We need to empower change. Well, what do we need to change? What are the things in your life, for example, that go against what God wants for you? Ask yourself the question, is this what God wants for my life? If your answer is no to that, then you need to change it. That's how you know to empower change, right? So those are our core values. Those are the things we believe. Everything is about that. That's why Kirsty spoke about honoring. God is a God of honor. That's why we honor God. We honor the platform. Not just anyone comes on the platform. We don't just be like, uh, uh, you over there, you can come. You can come talk on the stage. You, you would notice we don't call it a stage either. This is not a performance. This is a platform. Why? We're elevating God. We're elevating Jesus, not anyone else. That's what we're about. That's what we're about. But over the, over the next four weeks leading up to Vision, we're going to be doing a series. And I'll tell you off the bat, the title of the series is Normal is Overrated. Normal is Overrated. Normal is so overrated. Anyone attend Dynamica in the room? Wow. We love you, Dynamica. We were at uh, Dynamica early in the week, so th they, would have, they would have heard something like this. But you know what? Yeah, the, the, we did two assemblies at Dynamica at the same time. The first one went beautiful. It was fun. It was great. It was awesome. Then the next one, the sound didn't work. So I had to use this megaphone. And every time I spoke, it went, wow. I was like, hey, everyone. Every time I made a joke, it was, it was, it was, it was so bad. But anyway, normal is overrated. So maybe that's why it happened because people had to laugh at me a little bit. Normal is overrated. Stop saying this. If you say this phrase, stop it. I can't wait for things to go back to normal. Please stop saying that. If you know someone who says that, just hit, no, don't hit them. Don't. We, we're all about love. We're all about caring. Don't hit that person, but, but just look at them. Just be like this. Has it come? We, we're being honest here. Has anyone said that before? Come on, you can. Okay. I can't wait for things to go back to normal. Let me tell you this. Stop saying that because things aren't going back to normal. That's not how normal works. Normal changes based on what everyone is doing at the same time. Normal's overrated. Normal changes. We need to learn to adapt to that. For some personalities, you find that very difficult. You hate change. You're like, I want everything to be the same every single day, all the time. Wear the same clothes. Go to the same places. Eat the same thing. Come on, who's that person that orders the same thing at the same place every time? Try something new. Normal is overrated. My, this, is, this is me and my, my wife, Lauren, she orders the same thing. When we go to McDonald's, then, uh, she, and she also, she takes so long to decide what she wants, but then she still gets the same thing. It's, it's like, ah. But anyway, I, I, I wanna order a new thing every time I go, because I feel like I'm missing out on what else there is on the menu if I keep ordering the same thing. Normal is overrated. Try something different. You know what, we aren't normal. No one in this room is normal, actually. All of you are abnormal. Look at the person next to you and say, you are not normal. Look at the person on the other side, say, you are definitely not normal. Look at the person behind you and say, you, out of everyone in this room, are the most abnormal person. Normal is overrated. Normal's overrated. Uh, I, I have this thing, and I've always had it, is that I, I like being barefoot, but I prefer wearing socks. The, it's, it's, it's just a thing. When I sleep, I sleep with socks. Everyone who sleeps with socks, come on. There we go, there we go. All the barefoot people, all the people that just wear shoes, even in bed. Okay, just checking, just checking. So even when I, today we played soccer, 
I took off my shoes and I played in my socks. When I was in high school, we used to play in a parking lot, actually. They used to, it was like outside a spa and we used to play like late into the evening. But I didn't have shoes or I had shoes, but I didn't want to play in those shoes. So I took them off and I wore my school socks. I think we played for like three hours or something like that. And when I got home, like I, there was no more sock. <laughs> it was just feet. And it was, there was blisters. I, I walked like this. It was like I was walking like DT with new sneakers. <laughs> It was like, oh, I was like, oh, I'm not normal. In primary school, I really like, now this is a safe place. And when you laugh, we laugh together. We don't laugh at me. Is that okay? So can I share this in a, in a safe place? Is this a safe place? Okay. So I really like tomatoes. Like I, I, I love, anyone who loves tomatoes. Okay, there we go. Everyone who doesn't like tomatoes. All right, there's the door. You can, no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm playing, I'm playing. Okay, so in primary school, I used to take a full tomato to in my lunchbox to school. But but it wasn't just the tomato. I took you you know you had this Robertson's salt and vinegar spice. So I took it with me the whole the whole thing in my lunchbox. And I used to go to school and I took the tomato and I like put it like an apple and I put salt and vinegar and it was I am not normal. Come everyone say out loud, I'm not normal. So what is normal anyway? L let me help you with something. What you allow gets done. That's important to remember. If you're making notes, then write that down. If you're not making notes, try to remember it, but it's probably better to make notes so you remember it. What you allow gets done. This is an important lesson in life. This is important to re recognize. What you allow gets done. For example, if you're in a relationship or been in a relationship or want to be in a relationship, what you allow in that relationship gets done. Um, let me think of an example. This is an older group, so we can do that. Say, for example, you're dating a guy, and every time he walks past you, he smacks your bum. Now, the first time that happens, you could be like, oh, no. <laughs> and he'll be like, he, oh, no, 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 he'll be like, he, he, he. And then he'll carry on walking. But then you've allowed it, so the next time he walks past you, ta but it's not that funny that time by the time he does it for the 10th time in 10 seconds you're annoyed and frustrated because why is he why does he keep doing it well i can tell you why he keeps doing it because what you allow gets done now let's let's take that up a notch we, we want to live by god's word if you commit yourself to jesus it means you want to live by his word which means that hopefully that we want to reserve sex for marriage because that, that's what God teaches, right? He says you, you wanna reserve sex for marriage. Now, if you haven't been able to do that, there's no condemnation, there's consequence, but there's no condemnation because God restores because of His grace. But that's, that's what we want to do. That's what we imply on doing, right? What you allow gets done. So a smack on a bum can lead to making out, can lead to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. A sleepover can lead to innocent cuddling to the next thing, to the next thing. Is that church bells? <laughs> that's that's uh, interesting. <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying? What you allow gets done. It, it just starts with one thing that you've allowed and now it keeps on getting done. If you allowed someone to bully you at school, I bet you for a fact that they're still bullying you because what you allow gets done. If you're in a friendship group that criticizes everything you do, I tell you what, you've allowed it. That's why it gets done. Think about the things in your life you've allowed. That's what's getting done. If your marks are slipping, guess what? It's not the teacher's fault. What you allow gets done. You've allowed your marks to slip because you haven't worked hard enough or you haven't studied hard enough. Maybe you physically cannot grasp the information, different story. But if you're not studying hard enough, you recognize the fact that what you allow gets done. So we need to establish that. And over the next four weeks, we want to speak into that. What are the differences between people that are normal and people that think normal is overrated because I can guarantee you that Jesus and everything he writes went completely against everything that was normal in the time and day normal is overrated normal is overrated 2022 is a year that isn't normal and so was 2021 and so was 2020 but so was 2019 and so was 2018 because normal is overrated it changes each and every year so what, is, what has the last two years taught us, for example? Well, 
just remember this phrase that tough times teach three t's easy to remember tough times teach why do we go through tough times because they teach us valuable lessons if we didn't go through tough times we wouldn't need faith if we didn't go through tough times we wouldn't have learned lessons which make us a better person which make us someone that that can actually live out faith the last years they've taught us a lot it's taught us that time is really short it's way shorter than we think it is the last two years have gone like this and in another two years you're going to be like wow where did those last two years go because time is way shorter than you think it is so stop holding on to grudges with friends forgive them and move on i'm not saying stay friends with them i'm saying forgive them time is way shorter than we think stop holding grudges on your parents they make mistakes so do we tough times teach what else did we learn we're more resilient than we think we survive we're standing here we are here for those that made it to matric well done on doing two years of your school life two years of arguably the most toughest years that you have through COVID. Well done. Well done. You are more resi resilient than you think. Well done. If you passed last year, you're more resilient than you think. But let me tell you this. If you didn't pass last year, you're more resilient than you think because you can come back. You can make it and you can move again. We can adapt to change. Change is happening all the time. We can adapt to it. It taught us that staying connected matters, not only connected to each other, but connected to God. It matters. It matters. Normal is overrated. So I want, to read a, uh, I want to read a verse and I hope that you'll plant this in your heart. It's something that you can live out this year. And because it's 2022, it's 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. Easy to remember. Verse for 2022, 2 Timothy, 2 verse 2. 2 Tim, 2 2. 2 2 2. 2 2 2 2 2. 2022, 2 2 2. There we go. A lot of twos. Are you ready? Okay. It says this. This is Paul writing to a young man named Timothy. And he says this. So, my son, throw yourself into this work for Christ. Throw yourself into this work for Christ. Throw yourself. Not just, it's just, hey. Let me just try this Jesus thing out. Okay. All right. No, he's saying, throw yourself. I'm not going to throw myself. Don't worry. So you're like, ah, <gasps> throw yourself. Stop, stop being half-hearted. I find it fascinating. We throw ourselves into relationships. We throw ourselves into being called a girlfriend or a boyfriend. We throw ourselves when our parents say something that we're against. We throw ourselves into that. But when it comes to faith, we like, okay, I trust you, Jesus. Throw yourself into the work for Christ. Maybe someone, someone that's been hesitating to commit to Jesus, throw yourself. Someone who's been hesitating to get baptized, throw yourself, right? It says, pass on what you heard from me. The whole congregation saying amen. Say amen. amen. There we go. To reliable leaders who are competent to teach others. So he's saying, not, not only throw yourself in, but pass on what you learned. If, 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 if you leave here tonight, and maybe it impacted you in some way, but you don't do anything with it, then I failed. Me, myself, I have failed because I haven't encouraged you enough that you can go out and pass on to someone else. Now, ultimately, it's not my responsibility, it's yours, but it's my responsibility to encourage you. That's, that's why I'm here, that's what I'm doing. So I hope that when you hear something, when you hear a message, when something hits home for you, that you don't leave it here but that you pass it on. We need to pass on the message of Jesus because everybody needs Jesus, especially Alberton. But everybody needs Jesus. Pass on. He says, when the going gets rough, take it on the chin with the rest of us, the way Jesus did. You see, Jesus lived by example. He set that example for us. Take it on the chin. Someone swears at you, take it on the chin. Don't retaliate, take it on the chin. Someone bullies you, take it on the chin. Now there's a limit. There's a limit to that because eventually something has to change, but take it on the chin. It's tough. Tough times teach. Move on. A soldier on duty doesn't get caught up in making deals at the marketplace. He concentrates on carrying out orders. Stop worrying about all these little things that are sidetracking you and distracting you. Focus on what's really important. Focus on the thing that matters. Oh, she didn't say hello to me today. She said hello to everyone else. So what? move on i'll say hello to you i'll tell you what i'll say hello to you twice and then it's like she said hello to you stop worrying about the little things did you see she dressed the same as me oh so what who cares who cares so what she's dating my ex good luck to her he's an ex for a reason 
right? Move on. Get over it. There's a rumor about you going on. You can set the record straight, but it's out there. You know, people that genuinely know you will genuinely know you. You know what I mean? Stop worrying about these little things that, that trip you up. Worry about the big things, the things that matter. An athlete who refuses to play by the rules will never get anywhere. It's the diligent farmer who gets the produce, the person that works, the person that grinds, the person who cares, the person who nurtures, that's the person who gets the results. I'm not just talking about academic, I'm talking about your spiritual life. It's the person that presses into God, that's the person who gets the results. Think it over, don't just act, think it over, God will make it all plain. God will make it all plain. Think it over, God will make it all plain. Normal is overrated every time every time and every time. So can I encourage you to say no to normal? Say no to normal. Say, I don't want normal. No, I'm done with that. I want to live differently. And over the next three weeks, we're going to look at what that actually looks like. What is the practical outworking? What, what does normal look like? And what does Jesus say about it? Ask that question about everything in your life. What does Jesus say about this? Should I be doing this? Should I be drinking that? Should I be smoking that? What does Jesus say? Should I be with this person? What does Jesus say? Should I be going there? What does Jesus say? And I promise you, when you commit your life to Jesus, you start to have that, that feeling where you just know, when you know it's wrong and when you know it's right. And when we start walking in the Spirit, things start to change. Normal's overrated. If I can encourage you with anything tonight, stop trying to be normal. God created you the way you're meant to be. Step into that. Come shift, let's pray. Father, we thank you that we don't need to be normal. We don't need to fit in. We don't need to just go with the flow. That we can be different. Oh, Lord, I thank you that you created us all unique. You created us with different gifts, different talents, different styles, different personalities, different sizes, Lord, different families. I'm thankful for that. I pray that we can stand against normal, stand against what everyone else is doing. Say no to normal. And we can press into what you have for us. I pray for this youth ministry. I pray for shift. Every person here for, for this year ahead. I pray for school, for marks, for studies, relationships. You give us strength and energy. I pray for our mental health, our spiritual health. We can lift it up and we can keep it up and give it all over to you. While in this attitude of prayer, no one looking around, I want to encourage you to take a step towards Jesus. What does that look like for your life? Maybe you've never had the opportunity to commit your life to Jesus. Or maybe you have, and for some reason, you just haven't chosen to step into that. Can I encourage you to take that faith leap tonight? It's the beginning of a beautiful journey. It's the beginning of, of something special, something different. Normal isn't working. Someone's got to change. Know this, that John 14, 6, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to the Father except through Him. That means if we want to spend eternity in heaven with God, that we take a step towards Jesus. I love Matthew 7, 7. It says we need to ask, seek, and knock. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be answered unto you. The door will be opened unto you. God is seeking you. He's reaching out His hand. He's been stretching out to you. It's for us to open that door now, invite Him into our life. Maybe that's a step you need to take tonight. How do you do that? Well, it's called prayer. Prayer is a conversation with Jesus. He's always a conversation away. So I don't want to make you stand up or come to the front. So I don't want to make you do anything. I want to encourage you to take a step towards Jesus tonight. No one's looking around. This is you and God right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to count to three. When I get to three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you want to commit yourself to Jesus or come back to Him. So if that's you on three, one, two three raise your hand now if that's you that's incredible hands are going up everywhere don't worry about anyone else keep them nice and high this is you and jesus now if you want to recommit your life commit your life to him raise your hand now keep your hands up that's incredible so many hands going up that's beautiful god is moving the holy spirit is doing something in your life right now press in thank you jesus thank you lord you can put your hands down Father, I thank you for every hand raised, for every person that, that pressed into you, that committed their life to you. I pray, Lord, that, that they would take a step towards you and that you would move with them, walk with them, guide them, lead them to where they need to be. 
I pray, Lord, that, that even in this moment right now, they would feel a change, feel a difference, that they would know that they're not alone, that you are walking with them. Come on, everyone pray out loud with me. Dear Lord, come on, dear Lord, thank you for your love. I choose to commit my life to you. I'm stepping towards you. Forgive my sins and mistakes. You are my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate. Come on. Well done. To, to every one of you who made a decision to follow Jesus, congratulations. Again, like I said, it's a step towards Jesus. It's the beginning of an incredible journey, and it doesn't stop there. You've taken one step, great. Keep moving now. Keep pressing in. Oh, oh, oh.